Hi, it's Liz at Fort White. Welcome to Fort White Alive at home. We're so excited to share this virtual programming with you while you're staying safe in your own homes. So stay tuned, your Fort White Alive host is up next to guide you on your next adventure. Some of the supplies we have at Forest School, you could probably find around your own home. They're very simple. A container full of water, and we just happen to have pond water, and a paintbrush. And no other paint or food coloring required. It just paints up, wets the surface, and we wait for the sun and the wind to let it dry. Very easy. Another supply that we have is chalk. And children take the chalk and they'll dry on the picnic table or on these logs or on the big stumps. Practice their letters and shapes and whatever else they'd like to draw. We also have some charcoal from the fire. So that's effective as well. And some tree cookies that we cut up and the children love to color on them as well. So pretty easy stuff, probably have lying around, like I said. Okay, so when it comes to storytelling outside, there's so many things you can do with your child. Uh, for example, if you are reading a book, you guys can go through the book. Maybe you can analyze it, ask if you liked it, if you don't like it, what did you like? What did you not like with the book? Uh, you can also come up with alternative endings. So if you don't like the ending in this book or the book that you're reading, you can always come up with your own uh, endings, which can be fun. And when it comes to coming up with new stories, there uh, can be great to have items or artifacts that can trigger your imagination. So for example, you can use some stuffed animals and then come up with stories, maybe where they come from, maybe they went for an adventure, maybe they lost something and are looking for it whatever it can be it can be helpful to have some artifacts or uh, items to to spark that imagination and a fun thing to uh, do is also to write down the stories that you make with your children so if you come up with a story and it's long then you can always write it down and then you can do it again you can either read it or you can play it out with the stuffed animals maybe do a little bit of a puppetry play which can be great and lots of fun with children and other thing is that you can have a little bit of a bag when you go for a walk in your neighborhood and in this bag you can find interesting items that you're finding on your way maybe some bark or maybe some pine cones and these can also be part of the story so either you mix it up with the puppetry uh, the, the stuffed uh, puppets that you have or you make stories with the items in it uh, that can be written down or just told once and then be maybe you can try to remember it for next time or come up with a new story uh, another thing that you can do when you're out on your walk in your neighborhood hood, is to have different stations that you can stop by so maybe you guys are walking you're coming to a park and their story can start so come up with a character uh, some uh, maybe there's animals or people you know and then you can start the story there go for a little walk stop at a next station and then keep on the story adding to it and that that way the story can develop in the different areas that you go to um, so when it comes to the items and um, artifacts that you can use in your story can always be a good idea to keep them in a, in a bag of different things and then if that bag can be the sparking of the storytelling with your children. So hopefully you guys come up with some great stories at home and you used your neighborhood and your backyard to spark your, uh, your imagination for your stories. We've been talking about migration, supernap, torpor, hibernation, um, and we have a fun little story to wrap up with um, just what happens when geese go away for the winter called Hibernation. And this book is called Mother Bruce, written and illustrated by Ryan T. Higgins. Bruce was a bear who lived all by himself. He was a grump. He did not like sunny days. He did not like rain. He did not like cute little animals. 
Bruce only liked one thing, eggs. He collected them from all over the forest. Good morning, Mrs. Sparrow. But Bruce didn't eat egg, raw eggs like other bears. Instead, he cooked them into fancy recipes that he found on the internet. One day, Bruce came across a recipe for a hard-boiled goose egg drizzled with honey salmon sauce. So he went out to get the ingredients. First, he caught a salmon. Then he collected honey from a local beehive. He liked to support local businesses, you see. Last, he went to Miss Goose's nest to pay her a visit. Are these eggs free-range and organic, he asked. At home, Bruce prepared the eggs for hard boiling. But the fire in his stove fizzled, so he went out to get more wood. When Bruce came back, he was met with an unwelcome surprise. Mama! Bruce became the victim of mistaken identity. Bruce wanted hard-boiled eggs, not goslings. He supposed he could settle for buttered goslings on toast, but for some reason, he lost his appetite. Bruce scooped up the little geese and stomped back to their nest. I will have to ask Miss Goose about her return policy. Be back in April, only to find Mrs. Goose had flown south early. Bruce left the goslings there anyway and went back home. Mama, Mama, but he was followed. Bruce was very stern and said things like, go away, and I'm not your mother, and also, I liked you better when you were eggs. Roar! Bruce could take it no longer and became extra grumpy with them. It didn't work. Goslings always follow their mother, even if she is a he, and he is a bear. Mama, Mama! Bruce was stuck with them. He tried to make the best of it. It was hard work. Annoying baby geese. As the seasons passed, Bruce watched the pesky goslings grow older. Stubborn teenage geese. Boring adult geese. Then one fall afternoon, he saw other goose families flying south. Finally, he'd be rid of those geese and he could take a long winter nap. Bruce explained migration, but they didn't listen. Bruce needed the geese to leave, so he got creative. Nothing worked. The geese would not leave Bruce. Oh. So Bruce decided to pack some bags and take his geese into town. They boarded a bus. And migrated to Miami. Now every winter, Bruce and his geese head south together. They laze about at the beach in tacky shirts, sipping ice cold lemonade, while Bruce dreams of new recipes. Recipes that don't hatch. Mama. Thanks for tuning in and really hope you enjoyed the program. A big thank you to the province of Manitoba Safe at Home grant, which allowed us to bring you these virtual programs. Make sure you check out fortwhite.org for a lot more programs and activities. See you again soon.